this is bad for the West and double bad when you think about some of the things. On March 7, 2022, Zoltan Pozar released a paper titled Bretton Woods 3, where he made some bold remarks, quote, we are witnessing the birth of Bretton Woods 3, a new world monetary order centered around commodity-based currencies in the East that will likely weaken the euro dollar system and also contribute to inflationary forces in the West. A crisis is unfolding, a crisis of commodities. Commodities are collateral, and collateral is money, and this crisis is about the rising allure of outside money over inside money. Now, I made a video on this paper specifically, but today we're going to hear from Zoltan himself in an interview he did recently titled The Roundtable Insight, Zoltan Pozar and Ira Harris on the economy, Fin markets, and Bretton Woods 3. Briefly, for those who don't know, Zoltan is the managing director at Credit Suisse, a banking and financial services company, but he previously served at the Federal Reserve Bank of New York and was key in advising the US Treasury and White House officials during the 2008 financial crisis. He's a renowned financial plumber as he pioneered the mapping of the shadow banking system. So here is Zoltan's own summary of his Bretton Woods 3 paper. Yes, the, the, the short summary about Bretton Woods 3 is that, um, I think I think we are basically uh, 30 days uh, or whenever the war started, 30 days into a completely new monetary regime, uh, a new inflation regime and a new regime for interest rates. Um, again, you don't see most of this kind of regime change in, in real time, obviously, but I think changes have been triggered and, you know, five years, 10 years from now, when we will look back um, I think I think we will look at uh, uh, the past couple of weeks as as a period of time where a number of things have happened. Uh, number one, I think uh, I think the status of not only the U.S. dollar, um, you know, G7 inside money, um, inside money being forms of uh, forms of money claims that are the liabilities of a central bank or the liabilities of a private bank or the liability of a government that types of uh of uh, of inside money i think the allure of uh of of such instruments uh has diminished and 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 was tarnished uh, for certain countries i mean you know the world is kind of evolving into this us versus them uh block um and um you know, here I, I specifically talk about the the, the precedent of uh, of freezing uh, half a trillion dollars worth of FX reserves uh, that that belongs to uh, to a major uh, commodity exporter in the world. Zoltan brings up central banks in the West and G7 following each other in freezing FX reserves. This is a big deal, Zoltan proclaimed, and goes on to say that ultimately it will result in major shifts in how countries back up their currencies and receive payments. And it's certainly going to make these other central banks uh, and other countries think about what constitutes um, a good form of of FX reserve. So, so again, number one, one one pillar of Bretton Woods three is that the world as we know it, where everybody is happy to export to the U.S., get paid in dollars, and recycle those dollars onshore or offshore in the euro dollar market. I think that whole mechanism has been damaged. It's inevitable that change will come out of that. You know, it's not immediate, but it's but it's inevitable. So that's one one aspect of of Bretton Woods Street. The other comes from you know this observation that I just mentioned. If G7 inside money is not what it used to be, and you have to diversify, what else do you do? I mean, you can buy gold uh, because gold is a monetary asset, and you know, in in the case of Russia, for example. Um, it's good for them to have a lot of physical gold in the basement of the central bank because it provides a useful uh, nominal anchor uh, to, uh, to the currency in situations like this. So as Zoltan points out, and I made a video on this the other day, Russia and China have been buying up huge amounts of gold this past decade, seemingly preparing themselves for isolation. Also, if it's, uh, if it's not just um, you know, switching from, from paper money to the physical money, you can also think about Bretton Woods three in terms of alternatives to to getting paid in it for for commodities exported. You know, so you can invoice commodity exports in ruble. We've seen that example last week. You can invoice uh, trade between China and Saudi Arabia in terms of oil in in renminbi, for example. So you know, 
it's it's not only thinking about what else other than G7 inside money to buy gold, but also what other currencies you can invoice things and what other currencies can you start to accumulate surpluses in. So essentially what Zoltan is saying is that countries around the world will inevitably begin looking for and shifting towards other forms of payments and reserves, which will ultimately be inflationary and hurt the US dollar as the world reserve currency. This new global monetary shift is going to result in a sort of hybrid base for backing currencies. And as Zoltan predicts, will take the form of more real hard assets like commodities. And Bretton Woods 3 is probably going to be a hybrid of the two because we are back to physical anchors to currencies, you know, gold and, and perhaps other, other commodities, but also not just the dollar, uh, but other currencies, uh, and those are, those are going to be currencies of the East, not currencies of the West. Zoltan then gets into the West sanctions on Russia and says that the impact on the West from this is going to be quite substantial and underestimated. But again, the, 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 the impact on, on the price level, commodity price is, um, and because of that, you know, Fed policy down the line and, and long-term interest rates, inflation, inflation expectations, I think these, these are kind of accidental um aspects of all this because the pain on the west from this is 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 i think quite quite sizable and i don't think it's going to go away anytime soon so so i think the sanctions the sanctions is is, is very interesting again because by intention the design was x and not by intention the the kind of collateral spillover impact of this is something quite dramatic and quite sizable uh, that that I think took many people by surprise. Then Zoltan talks about how the next decade will see a major focus on commodities in general. I mean, again, the next five to ten decades, the, the next five to ten years um, are going to be extremely commodity intensive. Um, I think commodities uh, inequality and resource inequality is probably going to replace income inequality as the as the as the biggest. Um, Kind of topic that, that governments are going to have to attack and 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 worry about and in a world like that um it makes no sense to accumulate paper wealth that number one is going the value of which is going to be eroded by inflation the currency in which it's denominated is probably going to weaken for for for, for things we, we talked about and three where you have a confiscation risk if you come into you know conflict with with another great power in the south china sea okay so i think diversifying away from all this is imperative uh gold is definitely going to be a part of the answer um uh you know commodity stockpiles are also going to be um a a a, a, a part of the answer and also you know, this is just China's FX reserves, but, you know, you have other commodity exporters like the Saudis and, and Iran and, and Russia. You know, this is also going to mean that for other exporters, they are going to diversify away from the dollar and then accumulate surpluses in China. Getting into the People's Bank of China, for those who watched my last Zoltan video or read the Bretton Woods 3 paper, you know that Zoltan has China and the People's Bank being positioned very well in all of this. Zoltan explains. If you let the renminbi appreciate, you basically have a kind of commodity central bank of the world that is on friendly terms with the largest commodity producer, um, has a large stockpile of commodities, and at the same time lets its currency appreciate for its own domestic uh, kind of reasons. This is bad for the West and double bad when you think about some of the things that the West is trying to do with, you know, net zero emissions. You just have to look at Mark Carney's NAEP speech from, from last week. That's going to require a lot of investment. When you think about, you know, Europe's desire to wean itself off of uh, Russian fossil fuels. But if you want to build steel mills, or, I'm sorry, if you want to build windmills, you need concrete and steel for that. Right. If you want to build more atomic power plants, you need uranium for that. If you want to rearm, you need metals for that. And where is where are all those commodities going to come from? Zoltan also explained that if the West moves away from Russia, being one of the world's largest commodity exporters in the world, and sanctions them, then China, who is on good terms with Russia, can come in and clean up all of the leftover, quote, offline commodities that the West will not buy. Finally, to end off this video, I'll leave you with some of Zoltan's investment advice on how to play these shifts. Uh, what 
specific commodities do you like the best or you think make make the most sense from uh, an investor like in the western world what 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 investment would make uh, the most sense y yes and, and send it around specific commodities so what what do you what do you do well look i think you buy gold uh, i think i think that's a very ob obvious winner um i think um you know short short euro and long rmb um i think companies that own ships uh are probably another you know structural beneficiary to all this because again once once you have everything is shipped in commodity space right whether it's dry cargo or wet cargo again you need ships for that and um shipping rats are getting redrawn um you know instead of shipping stuff from northern russia to rotterdam you don't have to bring from china and then from china to rotterdam so you know everything's going to take more time you need bigger vessels for that so so again i think i think uh, shipping freight rates are are, are also a, a good way of, of of expressing some of these themes um and i think and i think uh, you know equities are, are are naturally going to benefit benefit from all this um some equities obviously not all um but um uh, but again you know rates rates and credit uh are are i think going into a completely different um regime from here um so it's 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 um it's uh, it's it's some of those things that you uh, that you want to think about <laughs>